Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Gravitational Effect on Space-Time. Here are the effects in special relativity on space and time, where we put a rod in a moving frame, and in the laboratory frame, we observe a contraction. We put a clock in the moving frame, and in the laboratory frame, we see a time dilation. So while the clock in the moving frame may register an hour, the clock in the laboratory frame sees something like maybe five hours. Here in the last video I show that time is distorted when you put a clock in a gravitational field. So what do we do up here with our clock? We put this clock in the moving frame and we put this rod in the moving frame so I'm going to make these prime to be analogous and consistent with my notation here. The dt without the prime is at infinity, the unaffected one, and that would be the laboratory time and over here the laboratory L. So by putting primes on the L naught and the T naught, we get these equations and then we uh, solve for L prime and T prime and look at the analogy, special relativity, space and time, and general relativity, space here involving my radial coordinate, because I have a spherically symmetric problem with the gravitational analysis. And notice that this factor here, the distortion, so to speak, in special relativity for time, needs to be in the denominator for the space. So I'm going to set up the spatial distortion, dr prime, in terms of the dr with this same factor in the denominator, just like I have here the square root of 1 minus v squared in the denominator for the space. Now let's review what we have done so far. In our previous section we used a conservation of energy with Newtonian potential energy which is not really precise, not accurate in general relativity. really can't do that. However we did it anyway and the rationale is that when you look at the weak limit, in other words, this being small, then general relativity needs to reduce to, to the Newtonian gravitational physics. So that is important to bear in mind that we don't expect our results to be true for all values of m, see so getting larger and larger and larger, but only in the weak conditions, in weak gravitational fields. Then if you square this in a weak case, this being the weak t uh, term here, then if you square this you get 1 minus 2 times you know this term plus this term squared, but since it's small, when it's squared it's very small, it's higher order, we neglect it. So when we do that we get for the dr prime squared we get the 2 showing up here and for the dt prime squared we get the 2 showing up and we don't expect this to be true for all strengths of the gravitational field, only the weak cases, but it turns out it's going to be better than that. In other words, our semi-classical derivation, we say semi-classical because we use some of Newton's ideas, being clever up here with this uh, symmetry, having a little bit of luck, this turns out to be exactly true. So here in special relativity, this is your line element, which you can recall us deriving that if this is zero, you basically have uh, a CDT and say uh, just one dimension, a CDT on this side and a DX on the other side, that's your distance is equal to your velocity times time. And in general relativity you have distortion of space and time due to the gravitational effects. This is exactly true. Notice that this blows up here when you have 1 equal to this term, this is then 1 over 0, and that's the condition for a black hole, that when the density is such that this should be reached, 
then the forces become so great that the mass contracts into what's called a singularity in classical general relativity, although we need to await quantum mechanics to try to understand like a singular point, you know, where all the matter went to a point because quantum mechanics would be required to fully analyze that. We do not have a quantum theory of gravity at this time. Uh, notice that if you put the mass of the Earth in and solve this equal to one, you get the radius to be one centimeter, kind of like a marble size. That means if all the mass of the Earth should be compressed to within a centimeter, then you would get the gravitational forces being so great, you would go to that singularity and have that point in classical general relativity. If the mass is the mass of the Sun, the radius is three kilometers. Well, that's the exact result. We got it by clever insight and a little bit of luck, and that saves you about two months of traditional general relativity to arrive at this. And once we have this, we can continue with the perihelion shift in a straightforward manner, thanks to a publication in the American Journal of Physics, which we'll talk about.